Hello and welcome to this Total Education, Total Media, Total Media Production of a lecture on The Shipping News by Annie Prue. Don't forget this lecture is provided to you free, so certainly look down, press the like button and make sure that you subscribe to our channel so we can keep supplying these to you. It's also important that you visit our website and purchase any materials that you think will assist you so we can keep making these videos. Tonight's on the shipping, lecture on the shipping news is specifically aimed at characters and what we're doing is we're looking first of all at the main character Coil and then we're going to look at some of the other characters if we have time. If not, it'll be carried over into a second lecture. Tonight I'd specifically like to start with Coil and talk about his character a little bit but in particular relating to how he interacts with the world and how the world sees Coil. And certainly while he's the protagonist of the shipping news is a much maligned figure from birth. Prue has said in an interview that Quall's happiness at the conclusion of the novel is more an absence of pain and that the happiness may be illusory. Quall has a complex and difficult past growing up as a child, um, victimised by his father, harassed and victimised by his brother. He seems to have stumbled through life, and I quote, as hive spangled, gut roaring with gas and cramp, childhood into a life brimming with grief and thwarted love. Not a very positive or um, certainly not an ego boosting uh, character and, and he has um, obvious issues and problems as we go through the text but in the end what happens is it's that absence of pain that makes us empathise with him and, and regard him as a character that sort of changes slightly but bumbles his way through life and his interactions with the world are what interests us and they are very interesting because especially at the start he doesn't seem to have any interaction with the world at all. The whole first chapter covers his early life and his physical appearance and physically he's huge but also seemingly ugly and, uh, and, and uh, not appealing at all to, to other people certainly extremely unlucky in his love life until he meets Petal Bear and then he becomes, in my opinion, even unluckier in many ways. It's crucial to your understanding of the elective to think about coil and loneliness. And he's a lonely figure at the best of times. And certainly when we meet him at the start, he has no friends. And I think, and I repeat it here, that loneliness is the crucial word for coil at the start of the novel and his, and his interactions with the world and the people around him. And, he seems to move on and ignore the world, and, that, and basically that's why he's lonely. Um, Quall is isolated by his family, by his physical appearance, and a lack of social skills. Yet he craves friendship when he's in, especially in that urban environment early on, he, he's always looking for someone to interact with, and he makes friends out of partridge. The things that isolate him in this environment aren't so important in New Newfoundland, where everybody's a little bit stranger and just that little bit different and seemingly more open and, and less self-absorbed and self-obsessed. The other thing that's important here is he learns to enjoy his isolation and, and he's happy not to be harassed by other people and he sort of, certainly lives in that pocket of himself in many ways and, and very few people get in but when they do get in he becomes very attached to them as he is with Dennis Buggett and Wavy and to some extent Jack and certainly we see him as, as a parent is excellent and, and that sort of gives us some sympathy and engenders you know a lot of support for the character despite his obvious failings as we read. The first slight happiness Cole seems to find is a friend in Partridge who he meets at the laundromat and through this tenuous connection he gets a job at the Mockingbird Recorder and I think that starts this newspaper theme that runs through it and we see later about the headlines and, and we'll talk about those headlines a little bit later on when we discuss language and that's in the lecture notes that you can get on the website but it's also important that you think here that Partridge is really his only friend in that environment and they do become lasting friends and Partridge sort of cling, um, Partridge and Cor cling to each other in many ways until this point, his life was abstracted, and that's a quote from the text, and he had no interest or knowledge in the world. And poetry sort of brings him back into the world a little bit. And I'll just read you that a very important quote to show you how little interaction Coyle has with the world. And we'll find it on page 11 and 12 in, in the Shipping News, and, and certainly this is my version of the Shipping News. And this 
text that you'll see here talks about very specifically, and this quote's often used when, when referring to coil in the HSC, and, and while it is a common quote, and I'm going to read you a lengthy piece of it, an excerpt is just enough to talk about in the HSC and to give you the momentum to talk about his initial interactions with the world. And what he says here, he is abstracted, he abstracted his life from the times. He believed he was a newspaper reporter, yet read no paper except the Mockingbird record, and so managed to ignore terrorism, climatological change, collapsing governments, chemical spills, plagues, recession, and failing banks, floating debris, the disintegrating ozone layer, volcanoes, earthquakes and hurricanes, religious frauds, defective vehicles and scientific charlatans, mass murderers and serial killers, tidal waves of cancer, AIDS, deforestation and exploding aircraft were as remote to him as braid catchers, canyons and rosette embroidered garters. In other words, and that quote goes on in, in a very similar way, and it says at the end of that quote on page 12, and it really near the end, the second last paragraph of the uh, chapter, first chapter, he was waiting for his life to begin. And that's certainly how we see Coyle at that early section of the text, where he's sort of bumping along. Then he meets Petal Bear and his life certainly changes significantly. Petal Bear marries him, or they marry each other, and she's initially attracted to him because of his large physical size, and, and it does quote later on, it's a certain organ that she's particularly attracted to, and it goes bad soon after the marriage, and she's bored with him and um, sees him as an ugly lump, basically, and she can't abide him. And we read later that she thinks the part of Coyle that was wonderful was, unfortunately, attached to the rest of him. And the marriage goes increasingly poor and bad. And Pell soon begins numerous affairs, often in the same trailer that they live in together, and she sleeps with other men while he's, he's in that trailer. Um, and he seems to accept this, and, and we, we sort of get an empathy for him through it, but he doesn't act. And, and it's that inaction that seems to, uh, an acceptance that makes Coyle an isolated figure in the early part of the text. She does, however, fall pregnant and has two children to him. Um, Sunshine and Bunny, and wants nothing to do with either of them. Coyle is the main caregiver, and certainly the only caregiver, because Petal's too busy off having affairs with other men and living her life. Um, often he just weeps in, and suffers in silence, and he becomes an increasingly and seemingly pathetic figure to Petal, who, um, and, and this sort of con is conveyed to the reader in many ways, and I'm not sure that a more a reader of in modern times would, would like him to act a little bit more rather than just suffer and take it all. And he seems constantly um, in pain. And it, it's like this at work too where he loses his job and gets it back and loses his job and gets it back. And he's never secure in any way. And his interactions with the world are extremely limited. His life falls deeper into a mire when his parents commit suicide. They commit a double suicide. And then Petal leaves for Florida with her new lover, taking and selling the children to a pedophile. And certainly, they're not touched by the pedophile at the particular point the police interrupt them, but it certainly is a very odd thing to have happen, and, and he's a little bit lost during this, as most men would be, I think. Fortunately or unfortunately, depending on what you think of Petal Bear at this stage, she's killed in a car accident and gets a broken neck. And the children, of course, are rescued and returned to him unharmed. Coyle now has nothing. So when Aunt Agnes comes and she couldn't make the funeral for the parents, um, his father was her brother of course, she comes later and she suggests to him that yes, that they do go somewhere and says to him, you've got a chance to start all over again, a new place, new people, new sites, a clean slate. See, you can be anything you want with a fresh start. And that's on page 28. And so thus his interactions with the world begin at this point in a different sort of way. He has to take on more responsibility. He decides on that change and moves out into the world in many ways. And then we can see that the effect of the global on him a little bit more and the way he responds to it. And we also look at that interaction of the global with how he responds to the other people on the island and how they're responding to the change that Newfoundland's undergone 
And we get lots of different perspectives that Prue gives us, and we'll talk about those when we talk about some of the other characters. But I'll mention here Turk Card, especially when he talks about the oil and, the, and, and what the wonders that the oil is going to bring to the island. And obviously, there's, there's, not, there's differences of opinion there. And we also get Jack Buggett's opinion. And I'll talk about that in great detail when I talk about him and how he has seen all that change and how he's adapted and responded to it. And that's another way of um, sort of looking at the global. Corn knows he has to get out and so he goes to Newfoundland and so he can begin again. It's the place of his ancestors and the home of his ancestors. And certainly um, he's moved into somewhere and he hasn't left anything. There's no future, no job, no relationships, no children. Not, not much for him there at all. Um, he, he can't navigate his way through this, but he can sort of make a new start and navigate his way when he goes to Newfoundland and he can certainly go there. Um, even without the intrusions of a global lifestyle, he's not coping at this stage until he goes to Newfoundland. And we expect that things can only get better for him. And certainly as we read, we certainly hope they get better for him. One little point here that if you're looking for a technique that will guide you through the incidents in his life, look for the headlines that appear throughout, such as runaway mum of ducks, children and dog farts fell family of four. These are clever, humorous clues as to what he's thinking and what he's doing. And, he, and as he changes and becomes more of a newspaper man and can actually write, those become more important. The question astute readers will be asking at this point in the novel should be, will things change for Coyle? Moving out of the urban life into unknown might be complex, but Coyle eventually makes himself a place in Newfoundland. Um, it's not a straightforward process, of course, nor easy, and Coyle is full of mistakes, and he manages to work his way through these mistakes, even becoming more outspoken. Coyle's sincere love and affection for his children is a constant throughout the novel, as is his ability to listen, and this is what makes him a, a decent character. Two factors which also help him navigate his way through life on the mainland in many ways. In Newfoundland, they are more successful, as many of his contemporaries are also slightly odd, and these two factors help him through the problems of settling in. And Coyle lives down his ancestry more or less, and we'll certainly talk about that in more detail later. Um, Coyle also develops through extreme trial and error and understanding of the sea, Newfoundland and the people in it. In the end, he finds love, he publicly shows affection for Wavy, and he seems established at work and at home. Not all is perfect, but he is now more than existing in pain. Perhaps this is the most we can expect from him. Well, that's all that we have really for tonight. And um, I'd like to, we only got through one character then, so obviously there'll be a second lecture on, on the other characters. And, and when, we, when we look at that, so we'll be looking at all, hopefully, most of the other major characters in it and some of the minor characters. Don't forget to log on to our website, totaleducationcenter.com.au. Look for the resources that you have there for the shipping news and the other resources we have for students of all ages. Um, don't forget, as I said at the start, like us down at the bottom so we can continue doing these for you. Thanks for your attention. I'll see you next lecture.